So, it has been a while since I have done a high-end all AMD PC build, so I thought we should do something a bit special. Right here we have two of the most powerful gaming components, the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, along with the Radeon 7900XTX. And we're going to put them inside this behemoth of a case to hopefully create a badass 4K beast of a system. Shout out to AMD for sponsoring this one. Let's get into it. So it all starts with the CPU. This thing is the gaming king right now. If you want the best gaming chip, this is it. It's got eight cores, 16 threads. This will actually be my first X3D chip, so I'm very excited to try it. If you don't know what X3D is, it's basically AMD's implementation of 3D V cache. They essentially stack L3 cache on top of the existing cache on the CPU, which gives a massive boost to gaming performance. It also comes in at only $440, which for the world's best gaming chip, I would say a surprise cheap. Now, of course, since this is an AM5 chip, we're going to need an AM5 motherboard. I went with the MSI MPG X670 Carbon Wi-Fi. I absolutely love this thing. It looks so stealthy and all black. It is a bit on the pricey side being a high-end motherboard, but it's got DDR5 support, PCI 5.0 for both the GPU and M.2 drives. And remember, it's AM5, so longevity is the key here. Like when AMD comes out with their next-gen CPUs or next next-gen CPUs, I can just do a straight swap because it's going to be the same socket. I think it's time to install this into this. Onto memory. Now, since this is purely going to be a gaming system, 32 gigs is going to be plenty. I picked up the G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB. It actually looks a lot nicer in person than it did in the pictures. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. But anyway, anything that's around 6,000 megahertz CL32 should do quite nicely for this kind of build. I tend to find that's around the sweet spot at the moment for price to performance on the AM5 platform. For storage, I'm going with two terabytes of NVMe M.2 from Samsung. I always find the 970 Evo Plus to be a pretty good blend of like price to performance. But I mean, there's plenty of room for expandability. I mean, we have four M.2 slots here and with it being an AM5 board, it also supports PCI 5.0 on both the GPU and the M.2 slots. So when these Gen 5 drives become a little bit more mainstream, this thing will be ready for it. I also like the quick release latches that a lot of companies have been implementing into their motherboards recently makes it super handy. All right, now that that's done, we can move on to putting it inside the case. Speaking of the case, this is the Kratos from Cougar, and it's actually been quite a while since I've built in an open air chassis. I figured since we're using some rather special components, we should push the boat out a little bit. But look at it, it looks like a transformer. Now I know this is not gonna be everybody's cup of tea, but personally, I quite like it. Let me know what you guys think of it down below in the comments. First order of business is to put this in here. For cooling, I went with the Fantex Glacier 1. This is a 360mm AIO, which should be plenty for the 7800X3D. It's actually a very efficient chip considering the performance, which is a nice change because recent years the trend just seems to be add more power. But yeah, I've always quite liked the look of the pump block cover on this AIO. It has this cool infinity mirror effect. Let's get it installed. Actually, I should probably tell you what fans I'm using. So the case comes with three of its own. You get two in the front and one in the back, and you can see they're kind of like this RGB halo ring. Now, I personally quite like the style of these fans. However, I don't want to be mixing and matching fans because I think it just looks weird. So instead, we managed to get some Antec Fusion fans. Now, these also have an RGB halo ring. I'm going to be putting three of them on the AIO to replace the boring black fans. And then the other three are gonna be going inside the case. And the best part is there's actually a fan slash RGB combo hub built into the back of the case. So that's definitely gonna help with cable management. Looking good so far, we've just got to install the pump block now and it's already got pre-applied thermal paste. Onto the fans. I actually had a bit of a change of plan on the side here. I was looking at it and thought it looked kind of empty. Now, I do have some fans left over, so I think what I'm gonna do is put three fans down the side here. Thank you. 
Fans are all installed, looking really good. Now, I'd recommend if you're going for optimal airflow to flip these fans around to an intake if you were gonna do this setup. As it happens, I am going for aesthetics today. And I mean, to be fair, it is an open air case, so airflow isn't quite as important as say it would be with a closed off case. Time to install the PSU. Now, 800 watts is the recommendation for this kind of system. In reality, it probably draws way less than that. I mean, the CPU is 120 watt TDP, the GPU is 355, and that's like maximum power draw. By the ways, I always like to give myself some extra headroom, so I went with the Antec 1000 watt signature. It's fully modular, titanium certified, and I mean, it just looks very nice, doesn't it? Time for some cable management. Finally, we're onto the GPU and we're gonna be using none other than the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX. This thing is a beast. It's got 24 gigs of VRAM, making it perfect for 4K gaming. It's got second gen ray trace and accelerator units, FSR 2.1. And get this, all of these outputs are DisplayPort 2.1, which means they have crazy max bandwidth. I mean, you can go up to like 240 hertz at 4K on these ports. Now I don't really stream, but it's also got full AV1 encode decode support. If you don't know what that is, it's basically the new gold standard for streaming codecs. Lower bandwidth, better quality. It's a win-win. Now I've decided that because this is such a nice looking GPU, we should probably display it vertically in the case. Now I have this vertical mount from Cooler Master. This thing costs around $80, which is on the pricey side, but I mean, you can see how good quality it is. It's also fully adjustable as well, so you can move the GPU from left to right and forwards and backwards. Let's put it inside the case. And just like that, the build is complete. It looks absolutely sick. Now, I did have to make a couple of adjustments. You can see here, I initially plugged in all black cables into the GPU, but I found that I had a couple of Vs lying around in the red. Unfortunately, I only had two, but I mean, at least it kind of matches the motherboard cable now. All that's left to do is to replace the glass side panels. Then we can get it all plugged in and I'll do some B-roll and benchmarks for you guys. That went well. <laughs> Starting off our benchmarks with Forza Horizon 5, this was 4K ultra settings with an average FPS of 167. Very good start. Cyberpunk 2077 ultra settings, no ray tracing. This one's a little bit more demanding on the GPU, but the 7900 XTX still managed to crank out 102 FPS. Up next, Hogwarts Legacy, again 4K ultra settings here, this time though with ray tracing enabled. Seeing averages of around 100 FPS, it's nice to see those second gen RT accelerators doing their job. Apex Legends, 4K high settings. Average FPS here was 187, way beyond the max refresh rate of most 4K panels. 1% lows looking very good too. On to Call of Duty Warzone, running ultra settings here with an average of 131 FPS. Slightly lower 1% lows here, but nevertheless a very smooth experience. Overwatch 2 ultra settings, native 4K. Average FPS was 260, really making the most of the bandwidth on those DisplayPort 2.1 outputs. Assuming of course you've got the right monitor. And just for fun, GTA 5, mostly very very high or ultra settings for this one. And at 4K, average FPS came out to 179. Possibly a slight CPU bottleneck going on here, but that's GTA 5 for you. And there we have it guys, super happy with how the build turned out. Absolutely crushes at 4K. I have a 42 inch OLED TV, which I aim on a lot. So this system is like literally perfect for that. If you guys want to check out any of the parts, I'll have them all linked down below in the description. Once again, huge shout out to AMD for making this video possible. If you enjoyed the video today, drop a like rating, subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you all in the next one.